Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here with your word for the day. And today we're looking at Matthew 22, starting in verse 41. And it says, Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they answered him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. I love this passage because Jesus shuts everyone up with one simple question. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had just been asking Jesus question after question, trying to trick him to get him into saying something that was blasphemous so that they could arrest him and condemn him. Of course, they couldn't because Jesus is God. But Jesus had answered all of their questions, and then he asked them one simple question, and no one could answer it. And this should remind us of a couple of things. But... It should remind us of how wise God is and how he holds all the answers to everything. But it also should remind us that we can't have all the answers to everything. God did not choose to reveal everything to us. Um, He did not give us all the answers to all of our questions on purpose. We cannot comprehend everything that God knows or he does. And it takes trust and surrender in God to be okay with that. We want answers. We want to know everything, the random questions that pop in our head, whether it's about the Bible or how the universe works. We want those. It's part of how we are designed, but we don't get all of those questions answered. And so we have to be okay with saying, I can trust that God has all the answers and he knows everything and he is in control and I can trust that. But I also have to be okay and trust that I don't need all the answers. And that takes faith in God and trust in him to say, I want the answer, but God has not given me that answer. And it's okay, I can trust him in not having the answer. But we can answer this question that Jesus asked because we have the vantage point of history and we have the entire Bible to study from. So to answer the question, the Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, is called David's son because he is from the line of David. He is from his lineage. So that's an easy part to answer. That's why he said he's David's son, because he's descended from King David. The other part is then why did David call him Lord? So Jesus is quoting Psalm 110, verse 1, which is a messianic psalm. So David wrote this psalm inspired by the Holy Spirit to proclaim that the Messiah would be something special. He wasn't just going to be another ordinary human. He was going to be something special. The Messiah was God in the flesh. Um, Jesus, who was is the Messiah, is God. It shows the importance of his deity but it also shows the importance of the honor that is due Jesus. So do you recognize Jesus as Lord? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus and said, God, I am a sinner. I need you. Please save me, forgive me, and I want to make you Lord of my life. If you haven't, you can do that right now. You can have a conversation with God and surrender your life and make Jesus your Lord. If you have already done that and have a life-changing relationship with Jesus, then have you surrendered every area of your life? And do you allow him to lead all areas of your life as your Lord? See, not just parts or segments of your life, but every area. Do you let him lead your family? Do you let him lead your finances? Do you let him lead your job? Do you let him lead your free time? Do you let him lead your sexuality, what you eat, every part of your life? Are you fully surrendered to God and let him be Lord over all of it? And the other thing is, 
Do you honor him and give him the praise and glory that he deserves? See, he is Lord of all. He is the creator and sustainer of the universe. He is the one who is the savior, who can free you from sin and hell and redeem your life and give you peace and hope and joy that lasts for eternity. He is the only one that deserves glory and honor and praise. And so do you worship him and praise him with your life? So today I hope that you choose to surrender every area of your life and let Jesus be your Lord and let him lead you and that you give him the glory and praise that he deserves. Have a great day.